Hello, Ramald. How are you? <laughs> Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? I can hear you. Can you hear me well? That's fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Ah, are, so are you in France right now? Exactly. I'm just in the middle of Paris. I'm, uh, I'm uh, like a block away from, um, from the Louvre. So oh. I'm in Paris right now. It's 8 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for spending part of your evening talking with me. My pleasure, my pleasure. Well, it was certainly my pleasure to watch on the line. Oh, thank you. So you, so you watched it, so I, so I can't spoil you. I watched it. You can quiz me. I, I mean, I see everything that Mel Gibson's in, number one. I don't care about oh, what his personal, you. I don't care about his personal battles over the years. His work <laughs> speaks for itself. Yes. And... Oh. Boy, does he deliver for you in this one? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm so I'm so happy. I'm so glad he did. Uh, uh, he was very. I was very lucky to work with him. Honestly, he was he was amazing. You yeah. know, and, and that brings up a question in my mind: Is for an experienced direct writer director such as yourself, is it a help or a hindrance when you have someone like Mel Gibson come on board? Who is also a writer director? Oh yeah, I, you know what? I'm just a huge fan of Mel's work, also as a director, as you can say. I, I was so scared because I was uh, thinking, okay, is he gonna challenge my 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 work, or is he uh, gonna uh, say anything? And he was such incredible. And he, the first day I met him, he said, "Look, I'm at your entire disposal. Uh, I'm gonna take my director brain, and uh, I'm I'm." One hundred percent, all for you and your and your and your film, and so that's why I I feel I, I feel so blessed. Yeah. I it just it, it, it actually it, it actually and it, and it's amazing because he knows he knows where to be. I mean, as an actor, but when when an actor directs, I mean, he knows things. He knows how it works. He knows every people on on, on the set. He knows. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it, I mean, it's easier for a director. Work with someone like him. Well, and this particular role as Elvis, a night radio talk show host doing shock radio, this was such an emotionally fraught and charged performance that I would think yeah. he had to take his, put his director's brain aside and just focus on the actor's brain because there is just visceral, raw emotion that he brings to this role. Oh yeah, and and, and uh, it's actually yeah, you're right because it's a, it's a one hour and forty minute film uh, long, and Mel is on screen for one hour and thirty eight minutes. <laughs> and so we are following him the entire movie, and uh, he, he delivered so. I mean, it was so focused um, every day. Uh, we prepped, uh, and uh, and you're right. I mean, some, some, yeah, I was uh, I was amazed by his performance. You know, where did the idea for this story arise? It's such, we've seen, it reminded me initially, uh, when I first heard about the film, it reminded me of the Canadian film Pontypool with the radio DJ in the studio and allegedly the world is going to hell in a handbasket outside and everybody's dying yeah. or killing each other. So we have that contained environment, but... Once I started watching this, I'm like, "Oh my god. This is an action. <laughs> this is an action thriller." Yeah, and actually there is something at the end that obviously we can't tell. Right. Uh, there is a, a, a big twist. Uh, and uh, but actually I don't know if you know that but I was a radio host for 15 years uh, in France for a radio called NLG, it's like uh, Kiss FM but national. And uh, so I did that for 15 years as a radio host. I was uh, I was at your place actually. You know? <laughs> so I know I know it is to 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 host a, a radio show. And and actually I had the idea because uh, one day during one of my show, um, uh, a, a listener called and uh, said to the switchboard operator that he kidnapped my mother. And if we do not put him live on the air, he's gonna kill my mother. And uh, unfortunately for his plan, my mother was already not uh, was was already dead. So it, so it didn't work. Her. His plan was not. Her. But but it, 
it started like that. I had the idea with, with my personal experience as a radio host. Wow. Wow. And, and also there is a lot of Easter eggs. I, I don't know if you, uh, in the movie, at the beginning, there is a, a weird guy coming to the, to yes. the radio station. Yes, you. Uh, the, <laughs> the Messiah, you know. And, uh, and it happened to me, literally, the same thing happened to me uh, at, in France, in Paris, uh, in the radio station. Someone arrived at the radio station saying the Messiah and he wanted to be on the air and he threatening, he, he, he was threatening uh, everybody, including me, and uh, it was pretty scary. So, so I put a lot of personal things in this field. Wow. The beginning... You know, when we have this guy who just shows up in the lobby and that and then as, as I'm watching the film, I'm thinking, OK, it's got to be the guy. It's got to be the guy. It's got to be the guy. You set us up. You create so much ambiguity in this film, Ramal. There are moments I'm thinking it's Dylan. Okay, that Dylan, something's not quite right. He doesn't want to go with Elvis. He doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to, I don't want to die. I, and I kept wondering, um, somewhere around, and I'm not sure at which point, somewhere on the hour, oh, the hour two minute mark. And I'm thinking, hmm, you know, is, is Dylan involved? So you, you give us all of these little MacGuffins and and just oh, yeah. build the tension and this is where the energy i have to commend your cinematographer absolutely have oh. to commend xavier and his camera work because so much of this it looks like a lot of it is handheld and steady cam because you're going through yeah. these yeah, hallways his is, yeah his name is uh, xavier castro and we worked with also a great steady uh, guy uh, called uh, nikolai when uh, and we I, I was lucky to work with the best guy in, in Paris and uh, it's my team. I work with them with for four years, and uh, we know each other very well. And Xavier did an awesome work um, on on uh, on the cinematography of the of the film. So I was lucky. When you wrote this script, Ramald, I'm really curious because were you visualizing it, storyboarding it out, coming up with making visual notes for how you would be directing this? Because so much of this is very specific as to the design of the hallway, the building itself internally, the hallways, the studios, the rooms. This is very specific. And it requires a lot of, of work with Xavier with camera work and blocking. Yeah, I, actually, uh, I don't know if you know that, but the, so the story takes place in the U.S., in L.A., uh, but we shot everything in Paris, France, which is, I think it's, a, it's the only movie in the world where the story takes place in a, in a big American city, but we, we actually, so printed, we, we printed like a large um, uh, uh, picture of L.A., and we light it uh, from behind on the, on the sound stage. We created like a, like a big, uh, radio station floor, mm -hmm. uh, trying to to match all the every details of an American uh, radio station, and uh, and I was very happy because when I wrote the film, uh, I had exactly uh, that image of, of 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 what we get in, at the end in the film with the team with the design, the art, the art design uh, department, they, they did an, an incredible job to find actually all the details from the light bulbs to, to uh, the, uh, the flags, the American flags that we wear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 looks, it looks American, but it's 100% uh, <laughs> from France. <laughs> but, you know, when we get internally within the building itself, how did you and, and Xavier design that in terms of blocking and all? Because... In many instances, you don't have a lot of room to navigate there. No, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a, yeah, it, 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 you know, we, we actually try to find uh, the best location in Paris to match, like, an American um, uh, building, mm -hmm. and we found one, uh, and and then uh, the, the, we try to find the best name for the radio station, and actually the name of the radio station is KLAT, and it's actually the name of the short movie I did, the short movie 
that inspires me the, the picture called talk and if you reverse L K L A T talk so it's like a easter egg uh -huh. uh, the, the, the the radio station um, the frequency is 100.3 which is the frequency of the radio station I worked on for 15 years um, so I had all those things I want to put in <laughs> I wanted to put in the film uh, and 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 I know that world. Uh, it's something that, I, that I've been into like for 15 years, the radio world. And uh, so I want it to be the most accurate, most uh, real possible. I have to say, the studio itself that that you built with the mixing boards, the sound boards, and everything, that is so spot on. It is perfect, perfect. And yeah. I love how. When the action really ratches up, once we get to about that hour mark, and even a little bit before, but really at that point, your editor, Pierre Marie, what the two of you do, building tension there, and we're seeing the radio dials, and we're seeing the red and green, we're also seeing the needle mark drop all the way to zero. Is anybody even breathing? So you wonder, it really adds to the suspense when you go back to some of those shots of the actual, the, the re-equipment, the sound equipment. And I totally love that. I just love that. Uh, I, I actually, actually, something I have to say that I never said to anybody is that, you know, it's hard to find, like, radio station equipment. Yeah. Uh, even for a movie. And, uh, and because we the pre-production was pretty uh, fast. And so I called all my old friends from the radio station I worked for uh, years, and I said, could you... Uh, help me with that to find that thing. So we went to uh, to a big storage with old stuff from the radio station called NLG, and we picked some like uh, like the, the 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 table where uh, Dylan, the character, is walking on, and and things like that. It's pretty it's pretty hard to find stuff like that. And, and the the table we had uh, in the film, and I didn't know that until we had it. It's a table I walked on for 15 years. On the radio station, oh. which was like in the, in, yeah. <laughs> so it's so it's like it was crazy, like uh, to, to to be able to get all those furniture, um, and and it looks real because it's it, yeah, it's real. It's so, real. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, but I have to say I was very lucky to to work with all these casting. Um, Dylan, um, played by William Mosley, was uh, in Narnia, and an amazing actor. Uh, Kevin Dylan. Uh, Nadia Forrest, uh, Alia, uh, Mel was incredible. Uh, it was honestly beyond my dreams. Like like we said, um, I was I was amazed about how much she was involved in every step of the making of the movie. Um, before the shooting, we were able to work on the script with him to to prepare. Um, and um, no, no, I was I was, I was so lucky. Well, how difficult was the casting for this one? You've got a great cast put together. You've got Mel, you've got Kevin, you've got William Mosley, you've got Paul Spera. I'm curious how difficult it was to put this cast together. Of course, everybody wants a trip to France, so that had to be a plus. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That, that, that's, the only, that's the only reason everybody can. To be scripts <laughs> and uh, <laughs> to be able to visit the Eiffel Tower. That's the only reason. Uh, no, no. Actually, Kevin Dillon had the best time of his life. He came and we had a lot of fun. We had we had dinner. We did great to shoot in France. I mean, it's 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 a lot of fun. And uh, we have we have also uh, an incredible talent called Enrique Arce. Yeah. He's oh. In Money Heist. Yeah. He's incredible yeah, as he, Tony. My gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's great. He's great. He's one of the best actor I ever worked with. He's uh, he's, he's very uh, he he's, he's, um, he has a fantastic scene with Mel and uh, and I contacted his agent like 15 days before the shooting and uh, and he was on board immediately after reading the script and so yeah I was I was very happy to work with all that guy. One thing that that stands out for me when I watch this Rumald is everybody gets their day their moment in the sun. This isn't yeah. all Mel Gibson as Elvis. You know, William Mosley has a big chunk of time as Dylan because he spends so much, the, Dylan spends so much time with Elvis going through the building, yeah. trying to discover what's happening. But everybody gets to shine. Enrique as Tony gets his big scene. Paul Spera gets his scene. Alia, she gets hers. Yoli Fuller as Steven, he gets his. Everybody 
is an integral part of this story. And they really have their own moments to shine. And I love that you, di that, you did that. Well, it, it's um, because we're focusing on male's character. Every, everyone is interacting with these characters, so that gives... Uh, something very, uh, very cool because he meets all those characters and uh, who are around him. And uh, Nadia Forrest, um, I have a specific story with um, with her because she she lived in actually she was in LA for uh, for like fifteen or twenty years. She, she spent in LA, yeah she was she was living in LA for all that time and she came back to Paris. And uh, and when I was uh, struggling, uh, uh, trying to make American movies like uh, uh, many years. Before she 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 was telling me to to keep to keep uh, um, believing in my dream, and uh, when I called her and I say, hey, I'm gonna do a movie with Mel Gibson, you you sh you have to be there. And uh, she's a great actress. She was one of the uh, most famous French actress. Mm. She, she's she, she yeah she helped me when I was uh, when I was nobody, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah. That, that, means, uh, that means a lot for me to, to have her in the film. How difficult was the editing of this? You work with Pierre Marie Croquet, and you've, you've got us on the edge of our seat every step of the way here, and it's very hard to find that razor, that razor sharp rapier edge for an entire film, mm -hmm. and yet you do it. So. I'm curious, how much of a challenge was that for you and Pierre Marie to f keep us on tenterhooks on the edge of our seats with this one? Um, we we worked for many years together with with uh, Pierre Marie. He's, uh, he's, he's an incredible editor, and um, and I have my offices, you know, I have my production company, and and we he, he worked with us for like yeah, yeah, probably even ten years, and so we had time. We did TV series together. We did we did uh, French features. We did uh, so now we know we know each other very well. So it's very fast. The working process is very fast, and um, and uh, he, he he knows what he knows what I uh, like, and uh, and I also know mostly what I don't like. So it's so so with that together combined with <laughs> something, and the and the process is very very fun. Yeah. No, because I think you've done an amazing job with the editing. And, of course, oh, going, yeah. going back to Xavier for a minute, you know, your visual tonal bandwidth, the coolness, the impersonal yeah. nature of this building, but it's a very personal story. And I love how you counter that with Elvis's warm home life, and then we go into the cold, sterile nature of this of work. And yet, everything explodes on a personal level at that moment and for the rest of the oh, yeah. film. You and Xavier, was that always your intention to design for that visual grammar and that visual tonal bandwidth? Because it, it's beautiful. I like the idea of uh, starting a movie with everything is fine and uh, he, he, he goes on his regular uh, radio show and, uh, and everything is cool. We can see the guy. He, he knows what he what he's doing every night for like 40 years and something happened uh, in the middle of the night and uh, and some, something crazy happened and, and, and we, are, we are with him in an incredible journey. So I, I like the fact that it, we, we go uh, very slowly in something. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, we create an emotional bond with Elvis at the beginning of the movie. And I, I just want to say to everybody that stay until the end which is very important uh, because at the end there is something special. <laughs> that's that's the, the most important thing. Because this is about radio, obviously sound is key here. And I am oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. very impressed with your sound design and your sound mixing because we've got mm -hmm. moments of silence that build the tension. We have just a single or a double gunshot and nobody's breathing, and you really lean into that sonically. But then you also give us, a, you know, Clement gives us a beautiful underscore, under notes of a, of a score in appropriate moments, while you're still embracing silence in others. There is, there, uh, there is actually um, someone who told me that, um, that sound is 50% of the image, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I like that. The, and, and in that specific movie, we actually did all the sounds live uh, on set for Mel. You know, he's on the radio station, he's talking right. to a listener. Uh, and uh, and so we had Paul Sparrow doing the the character of Gary. He was just like a few meters away in a in a box uh, talking to Mel, and Mel had directly his voice in his in his in his ears, and also all the sounds like gunshot, uh, breaking glasses, and everything. So so it was very it, it was very um, it kept everybody on on his feet, and uh, and and it's. Uh, it was very efficient. And the second thing is we worked with an incredible uh, young guy. He's like 22 years old uh, for the score, for the music. Uh, his name is Clement Perrin, and he did, he did like the entire uh, music of the, of the movie. He's a very, very young guy, so talented. And, uh, and, and so both combinated things like music and, and sound design, it, it, it's perfect. Wow. Curious for you, because you're writer-director here, how much, and because this is so precise in many respects with setups and for what's transpiring, did you give everyone room for improvisation or did everyone stick pretty much to the dialogue in the script? Oh, no, no yeah. Um, I worked with everybody before the shoot and, um, and, and, and actually Mel put a lot of um, uh, ideas um, uh, in the script and, and everybody. I, I, I'm always open uh, for, uh, for discussion. Um, of course, we, we didn't have a lot of time for shooting. I don't right. know that, but we did that movie in 15 days, which is... Which oh, is, wow. Uh, uh, 15 days. So we do not have a lot of time on set to, uh, to discuss everything, but because, because we had time with, with the cast and everybody before... To, uh, to so everybody was able from from William Mosley to even Paul Spera to to say things they for their their character. Uh, so I think like everybody was involved at a point. Yeah. Wow, and I do have to say, and I'm sure that it was authentic. A lot of sweat on Mel and William as they're running up and down the stairs. Yeah, they are. No, yeah. I mean, they, they have great connection together. I mean, they, they were pretty. They didn't know each other before the shoot, and uh, and Mel and William were very. Uh, they were very. Uh, it, it, it worked very well. Yeah. And, oh. uh, it, it's always, you know, when you go on a shoot and you know that they be for. You never know what you can expect uh, for the relationship with, between everybody, um, the crew, the cast, and and I was lucky because it was like a. It takes a village to do a movie, and uh, and the, the the world village was uh, was uh, happy to be here, and uh, and uh, yeah, no, that that was great. So now that on the line is done, everybody's going to get to see it. What did you learn as a filmmaker in making on the line that you can now take forward into future projects? Well, it's a good question. I'm going to write on the line too. No, <laughs> no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, it's a good question because this one was very personal, as because I was a radio host. So, so uh, uh, this one is, uh, and I was the only thing I loved in that thi- in that film is the fact that people are usually surprised at the end, and I love that feeling. Uh, and uh, when we did some screenings uh, to see people. Uh, surprised uh, that the best gift I, I have had. Uh, so if I can do movies where where I can surprise people uh, and the audience, that's my uh, that's my goal. That's why that's why uh, that's what I'm working on uh, these next days. Yeah. Well, this one definitely. Everyone that watches on the line, they are in t- for some really big surprises in this one. <laughs> Edge of your. Uh, Edge of your seat, scare you to death, and really big surprises. Just so well done, Ramald. So well done. Oh my God, I'm, I'm very, very uh, excited about that, uh, about, about this release, and uh, definitely in the U.S. Uh, and uh, thank you for your fantastic support. We oh. really appreciate that. Hey. And I love the show, Debbie. You know, I watch like before this interview. I watch like the hundred shows you did, and uh, <laughs> and I, I have to say, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. 
I can't, I can't wait to talk to you again in the future about your next film. Me too. I, I look forward to that. And in the meantime, it's Halloween weekend. Have fun. Oh, yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're excited. We do not celebrate a lot Halloween in France, but uh, it, 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 it's coming. It's coming, yeah, but year after year. Yeah, and uh, so the kids, the, kids are, uh, the kids are hungry, so it's great. They want yeah. candy, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, oh. exactly. But thank you so much again. Thank you, and hopefully we'll talk sooner rather than later. Oh, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Thank you again. It was wonderful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.